What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking Nine Perfect Strangers, episode five titled Sweet Surrender. If you wanna know my thoughts on the previous four episodes, I made another video titled Nine Perfect Strangers, episode one through four review. I give my quick thoughts on the four episodes, kind of like where I'm at now, what my expectations were going into it. And uh, I so far I thought the show was okay to good. Uh, I kind of was expecting more of like a murder mystery creepy vibe. Uh, but the, although this is still creepy, you know, it's more of like this like resort behind the scenes, not as like high stakes or dangerous as I once thought. Uh, but it is still good. I'm going to give you my thoughts and recap of episode five. But before I get into that, uh, if you guys like Nine Perfect Strangers, if you like keeping up with all the new TV shows, if you like new movies, uh, DC, Star Wars, Marvel, we talk about all this stuff here. So please make sure to like this video. Please subscribe. And uh, let's talk about episode five. Yeah, so I kind of look at this episode as like the hallucinations episode. You know, it kind of like... The overall theme is kind of telling us that like these drugs are now working, but I still think it's weird how like all these characters sort of like accept that they're like being drugged, you know, like some of them have like their little quarrels about in the beginning, you know, Michael Shannon was like questioning it, but now they're all happy to be taking it. They're like, oh, give us more of what you put in there and stuff like that. So I just feel like that's, I don't, I don't know if it's like, that's part of like the drugs are doing that to them or if it's just like not realistic. So I feel like more people would be like an uproar about like just being drugged when they were supposed to be going like the, this health resort. But whatever, let's just get right into it. Uh, the episode starts out with Masha kind of having flashbacks to when she got shot. Uh, the big reveal here is that we actually get to see the guy's face that shot her. And it was like this black male with like a messed up eye. I don't know if that's like what he actually looks like. I guess so, right? And I guess that whole story would play a part into who is watching Masha. And we still don't know. We didn't really get much answers to who is still watching Masha. But I think that flashback is important to what the guy's face is. Maybe it is him that's doing this. Maybe... My thoughts are like, they're kind of making it seem like maybe it's one of these characters, you know, like maybe Lars is always talking on the phone. They're really making Lars sort of weird. But uh, I think it's just gonna be someone from her past coming back. Maybe someone that was mentioned. And uh, and that's that's what I, that's my personal theory of who is watching Masha. Uh, but after that, we have Zoe who hallucinates seeing her dead brother. I think his name was Zach, right? And she kind of sees him in his room. Uh, Heather comes in, her mom, and they kind of, you know, talk down to it. The next morning, Michael Shannon uh, starts singing to her, sings Grease, which was awesome. I thought that was so funny, so cool. Having Michael Shannon as boxers, uh, just singing is great. And that's not even the first time, or that's not the last time we're going to see him singing in this episode. Uh, but after that, we have all of them sitting together for breakfast. Lars tells them about his dream of him giving birth um, and how Tony was like the father and all this stuff. So I guess it's just another example of these drugs working. You know, they're all having these vivid dreams. And then we cut to, well, not that we cut to, but Francis comes into the picture. She's kind of like all out of it, sort of loopy, I guess, from the drugs as well. And uh, she passes out. So she passes out and we're, you know, we're then brought into her like hallucination thing, which is, I think it's more like a dream than a hallucination. And she sees her, um, was it her ex-husband, her ex-boyfriend that I guess like catfished her and took her money. And so she gets this whole like, you know, dream sequence where Masha comes and gives her the sword and says, kill him. And she like kind of like puts the sword in his head. We all, we knew this whole time this was hallucination or something. She wakes up after her head's been like planted in the oatmeal. And she says, oh, she must have been hallucinating. Now, I think this is important for later on in the episode. I'm going to give you my theory on how that line's kind of important, I think. But I think it was more of a dream than hallucination because she was passed out. Um, so then after this, this leads to, you know, Francis. Uh, well, Francis... Francis being taken away by Tony into the room. The most important thing that happens here is that they almost kiss, kind of more teasing about how they're, you know, they're starting to like each other more. There's a relationship is forming there, as we'll see later in the episode again. Uh, and then we get a talk between Masha and Delilah in the grass, where Masha, uh, where no, Delilah tells Masha that she wants him, she wants her to stop having intercourse with Yao. And then this leads to a makeout scene between Delilah and Masha. So confused here. We kind of knew that there was like some weird threesome acceptance thing going on here. But the fact that I didn't know like Delilah, you know, I don't think she has feelings for Masha. I don't know if it's like a respect, weird worshiping thing that's going on here. Like they see her as a goddess and maybe Masha does, or maybe Delilah does like Masha like that. I don't know. A little weird, but that's not even the weirdest thing that happens in this episode. After this, we're treated to another uh, Zoe and Lars kind of talking in the sauna again. They're screaming. Zoe kind of vents to Lars about her brother. Uh, nothing big happens here, really. We then get another, we get a cave jump scene with uh, Napoleon, Michael Shannon's character, and his wife, Heather. And this promotes like, a good message of like taking a leap of faith, like taking the plunge. And uh, that's what I get out of it. You know, the show continues to promote like good messages. You know, it's not like just this creepy thing going on. There is like a good theme to it of like 
kind of like accepting yourself, confronting your past, going through, facing your fears. And I did like how the show does promote that. Right after this, we get a weird, weird sex scene between Delilah and Yao. I'm wearing a Doctor Strange shirt today for the What If episode I'll be talking about later. And this is like what I imagine Doctor Strange has sex like. If, I'm not, I'm not going to put up photos, but it was like Yao was like doing this weird thing with his hands to Delilah. And Delilah was like having an orgasm just by Yao like doing stuff with his hands. Super weird. I don't know what the hell is going on there. I have no theories. If you guys have a theory, like, just let me know. thought it was we super weird. Um, but after this, Tony and Francis have another talk. Tony kind of, like, hints at, like, suicide, I think. He kind of says, like, he doesn't know if he's going to make it to the end of the week, the end of the year, uh, saying that, you know, he doesn't think he wants this more you know, strong enough. And Francis kind of tells him that he cares about him. And uh, Tony looks at her like, you know, like, he, I, he really does like her now. And, uh, yes, yeah, so, I mean... I don't know if this is like foreshadowing. Maybe Tony will kill himself or maybe he'll die. I think so. Maybe they're kind of hinting at it way too much with Tony. It could happen. We then get uh, Car Carmel, I think. She's taking a walk in the woods, sees Sigourney Weaver's character and her boyfriend kind of having sex in the hot tub, which I thought was a hallucination at first, but I don't think it is because right after... or It still could be, actually, because she never, like... It's never like confirmed that that was real, you know, because everyone was hallucinating and maybe maybe she did hallucinate that. I don't know. We'll see in that next episode, maybe if she asked them about it. But Lars comes and, you know, talks to Carmel about it. And Carmel just kind of like rants about her ex-husband and all this stuff and how she feels bad about herself. Another good message, message is promoted as Lars kind of tells her to love herself. Like it's okay to feel all this stuff. And then this leads us to our ending where they're having a birthday party for Zoe. Michael Shannon sings again. I really enjoyed that they like had Michael Shannon sing twice in this. I love Michael Shannon. Seeing him sing was funny and cool. But the most important thing from this ending is that it leaves on another weird cliffhanger thing. Um, it shows Zoe looking at the pool and her brother is there sitting down. And Masha like notices her looking at like Zoe looking at something. So she goes over to Zoe and like speaks in a different language and says like you see him don't you like that's why you're the key and then the episode ends and so i think that, you know this is obviously really important to like i don't even know like what, like what is actually going on here like maybe like she bring maybe masha brings all these people here to find like the key to find out the one who can like take the drugs and like use them in the way that she wants because this is why i said the Fran miss melissa mccarthy line before when she said oh i think i was hallucinating I think it's important because a lot of people hallucinate in this episode, right? We got Lars who like had this vivid dream. We got Zoe who hallucinated twice. We got Francis who said she hallucinated. Uh, Tony kind of like everyone's got like vivid dreams or hallucinations. And so I think that what's the difference between Zoe and everyone else is that she actually hallucinated them while she was awake. Well, if you look at um, or like with her eyes open, you know, because we look at Tony, he was like looking back, like he said, whenever he closed his eyes, he sees his past. Francis was knocked out when she had her whole hallucination. As we see, she was knocked out in the oatmeal that whole time. So she was, hers was more of a dream than a hallucination. Lars was a full on dream, just a vivid dream. So the difference between Zoe is that she was able to see her brother in like real time. And the fact that Masha notices that I think is what makes Zoe important is because that she can actually hallucinate and like interact with these hallucinations like without her eyes being closed you know so i don't know i don't know how this will play into like everything else and what's going on but i'm going to give you guys my rating for this episode i'm giving it a 3.6 out of 5 uh one like notch lower than the first episode but i do think it was better than the last better than two three and four a lot of stuff goes on we kind of figure out more you know things happening the hallucinations did make it more interesting but overall, I'll say that like the show still doesn't have me hooked. You know, it's not having me like itching to watch the next one. Like I can't wait, I can't wait. It's just a lot of like intriguement for me. Like I am gonna keep watching, obviously. I am still like interested, but it's not something like I wanna like sink my teeth in and like have to like recommend everyone. I think it is still good, but I just hope uh, I think we have eight episodes, right? So we just watched five, so we got what three, three episodes left. I do think that uh I hope it get just gets better. I think we need to see some deaths, like I said, just need more elaboration on certain things but it is getting super weird like we're going into like this weird territory where like we got the key and hallucinations and the weird sex scene with delilah and yeah i want to know what's going on there uh but if you like this video please like the button please subscribe and um that's it i hope you guys like this and i'll see you in the next video